Hello and welcome to another episode of Smart Talks. I'm your host Joanna Suhani Rampas and today we are going to discuss about the bread and butters issues of East Malaysia. In this episode we will dive into the economic landscape and looking at to the intricacies of the 2024 budgets of Sabah and Sarawak and we will uncover the economics um political dynamics and def- that defines the essence of these two states and today joining with me is Timmy is also a friend of mine and he is a finance and economic lecturer so welcome Timmy yeah i mean you know the cost of living in sabah is already so high right and mm. then on top of that you know 8% 6 to 8% tax is going to be you know implemented mm. next mm. year mm. and then but but lucky enough pmx did not you know uh decrease the subsidies of diesel for Sabah and Sarawak yes the diesel is for the Sabah Sarawak is still maintained right? the, the diesel is only sub, the exemption is only for the peninsula right correct okay exempted lah but for Sabah Sarawak i think first Sabah Sarawak the our area is quite big yeah okay probably the lorries okay or like those heavy truck mm. we still quite depends on the diesel lah that's Definitely, the one thing yeah. but one thing when you mentioned scan pasal the just now the 6% to 8% right one thing i realized that kan my friend lah surrounding my friend actually most of us ah we have two job one one is the one is the permanent job mm. okay the permanent sa like morning day time you going but mm. of course there is a second job either is to become the grab or they involve in this what we so called the direct sales or what we so called the MLM. Multi- M- MLM. M- M- MLM, uh, yeah. MLM. So they're working the MLM and they try to earn the we so called the extra income lah. Double in uh, double income to yeah. survive. Uh. True. Okay, I think to survive because one thing is that uh, I think the our Sabah GDP per capita ah uh, Okay, it's, I think it's the second or the third. I think the second or the third lowest. lowest. I think it's three. I think roughly per person income is about roughly 3,000 ringgit. 3,000, yeah. Uh, 3,000 ringgit. But 3,000 ringgit on top of that surprisingly is that uh, I think we have shared a news before. I think last week we have talked mm. about that. The cost of living in Sabah mm. actually is 30% is higher than the higher Sarawak. Higher than Sarawak, correct. Okay, but by right from the economic perspective, right? Mm. Supposedly a place where by your income is high, mm. then your inflation barang baru mahal lah. Correct. So if your income high, that means that they will demand untuk uh, demand more good and services. Yes. And then things will be maybe uh, supply and demand probably you will be things will be more expensive but surprising is sabah income is low tapi barang mahal sangat mahal correct <laughs> <laughs> this is why this morning you have your bread and butter at your home lah i did i didn't go outside i'm trying to minimize as much as possible of eating outside actually i felt this you know um last time i mean during our time i don't know whether you went through this Tim, where you know when when we were a lot younger, uh? you know that mie skola. Mie skola, the the mie goreng. Oh, okay, okay. okay. <laughs> the plastic. I think yes, yes, yes. This one I think is fifty cents. I think twenty cents. My time. Hey, my time. I I think it's almost the <laughs> same generation. Okay, lah. Okay, same, same age, same, same age, lah. <laughs> okay, so I think that time twenty cents. I, I still remember me with I, with the hot dog was oh, 20, twenty cents. cents. I think that time I think my lot is fifty cents. No, I, think, I, I think Milo is 50 cents that time. I, I Okay, lah, in Kulu, we didn't have much of that. Lah, Milo, nothing. <laughs> lah, <maso. laughs> but, but we had, I always had uh, like um, mie goreng. Uh-huh. Uh, and then it's 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 okay. It's it's a, you know, fair fair amount of mie goreng with mm, hot dog. Mm. And it costs like 20 cents plus uh, with the hot dog will be another 10 cents. It's 30 cents. Okay. Now, uh, I think it's I'm I mean, not sure how how much you oh how much you roughly the pocket money now for the the student now roughly. I mean I don't know I have a three year old child. So <laughs> she just, she just Same. Need that because previously part. because previously when my time uh. okay when my time during the primary school I remember my dad is give me one ringgit one ringgit can survive whole day. Yeah yeah I I, I remember when I was in primary six was. 50 cent can survive. Uh, can survive, I think. And then when I went to form 1 to form 5 was about 150. Yeah, pretty much the same. Yeah, yeah, yeah I think it's about but the same. But now... Now I think the story is, I think it's quite difficult. Just let me fr- uh, just uh, share when I just start to work. Mm. Okay, actually I start to work, I think it's about during the 2011th. 
Right. Okay, during 2011, that time I baru just start working. Okay, I think that time when I I working at Lintas, okay, con- uh, considered as a part of the city. Okay, that time I remember that one day my spending, I can maintain about 10 ringgit mm. or 12 ringgit is breakfast and the lunch. Lah, mm. Okay, breakfast normally, uh, maybe I just take a pao or maybe just a bun with the, with a, with a, with a, with a tea. Mm. Okay, probably maybe the cut maybe about two ringgit and my two ringgit or 250 or maybe and my lunch maybe about eight ringgit mm. so 10 ringgit i think i can survive maybe like 10 years ago now mm. after i worked for 12 years now one day i think now of course my place is work is moved to sit the city of center so but somehow the spending for one day for breakfast and lunch about 25 ringgit it's very expensive it's yeah. very expensive so this is why just now back to just now i think to survive in sabah in here you need to have at least two jobs. Yeah. Uh, and it's sad it? that we're moving towards the direction. Yes. I mean, mm. it just means that, you know, the 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 it's putting so much burden on the on the rakyat, I would say. I mean, if you want a fair so I mean, if you want an extra job for, you know, for extra income, as if mm-hmm. like, you know, your minimum wage is enough for you to survive, uh, or you know, at least to live quite Comfortably, la, I mm, would say. True. That was okay. But you are doing two jobs because of you need to try to <laughs> pay all the bills at home, you know? I mean, like it's it's I yes. feel it's a burden for the Raya. Right? It's a burden, I think I think it's a loss to the state too. Why I say so, you mm. see. E, chu, now I think we need to take a fact that we are uh Malaysia, not just Sabah, I think in the Malaysia we are in the middle income trap. Yeah. Middle income trap that's mean that our income is not really has a significant increase or what mm. for the past few years. Mm. Okay. And one thing I realized that is that when we have spent too much of time in working and look for income, mm. okay, actually we have lost the we so called we so called the quality, quality time, of life, quality of life, yes. or quality of time, to like what we so called to increase our self value, yeah, our self value because in order for you futures to have a better job of better career, mm. actually from time to time you need to keep improve, yeah, right. You need to keep improve either is you go to keep uh, uh go for a course okay or go to learn a new skill or improve your skill mm. okay so that you have a better what we so-called a uh, career mm. okay with a better profile mm. right but somehow now people you are spending most of the time in cari kerja cari duit yeah okay but whether you have additional extra money mm. for saving mm. okay for your self investment and what I said just now is like an investment on yourself yeah okay besides that how about buying house? <laughs> oh, yeah. Okay, buying house. Okay, like, for example, uh, what else? That, um, besides house, of course, the car. Especially in some our transportation. No, not public only transportation that. Public You is know, not that house, house is so expensive in Sabah too right now. Yes. I... So expensive. <laughs> Renting pun aduh. Pening kepala. Yes. So, this is one thing that I think is the things that face or may challenge lah, faced by the social today. And I'm not surprised why a lot of our young people are just leaving the state. Yes. Oh, some of my friend actually is leaving to it, is leaving to Singapore. Mm. I think or probably some of them like choose to go to Kuala Lumpur. Mm. Okay. Or some of my friend actually is uh working in uh, what we so called in Melbourne. Mm. Like, I think in the Melbourne or the Sydney, <clears throat> I think it's quite a lot of yeah. Orang Samba. Yeah. Okay. Some of them they say one of the city I forget, they said it's like Basically, that is the like is the Perth small Saba. Perth too, I heard. Oh, Perth. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. That's a small Saba. You say mm, mm. like because I'm a Hakka. Okay, mm. so they say that a lot of Hakka Chinese people they are uh, how to say that migrate it's migrating today. there they, because yeah. they say the uh, like for example like Australia they give a quite a good treat a uh, good how to say good treatment to the professional. Okay, you yeah. can have a work life balance probably. Okay, that's the one thing. But when you when Joe just now you mentioned that people talent are leaving the Saba right. Mm. Okay, actually, one thing uh, it's quite surprised me is that UMS, okay, every year, uh, the intake, uh, mm. okay, as I know, maybe I think 60% actually the student is come from Semenanjung. Oh. Okay, okay, Semenanjung and then probably also the Sarawak. Mm. Okay, one thing i quite surprised is that after they graduate, okay, they did not choose to stay in Sabah and work in Sabah. Mm. They back to 
their own place to work. Okay, from Perak back to Perak, from Penang back to Penang. Okay, and they didn't stay in here. Okay, so I can see that one of the probably the reason is how is the job opportunity available in Sabah in here? But 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 if if I can uh, mm. ask you a question there, since you mentioned it's just sixty percent mostly from Semenanjung, mm. and then you know another forty percent is from mm. Sarawak. But what about the Sabahan? No, I mean sixty percent is already include the oh Sabah and Sarawak. Sa- no, some sixty percent is the peninsulas and then the Sarawak. Okay. Okay, so the rest. So forty percent is Sabahan. Ah, okay, Sabahan, all right. Sabahan, yeah. So if you're talking about that, meaning our Sabahans are not getting, uh, you know, is it? They have the opportunity to go. To I think they have the opportunity into, of course, uh, enter the local U. But yeah, some, local uh, some of them probably they opt for go to like, for example, to KL, mm. uh, to university, uh, to KL uni- public university or the private university. I think some of the students, okay, after they finish the diploma in Sabah, mm. they might opt to uh, KL. Okay, continue the degree. Why? Because they plan after finish degree, they directly to get a job there. I actually, I was one of them. <laughs> <laughs> Then what made you come back to here? Jo, I, what made you come back to here? I, I have a different vision for my goal for myself. <laughs> I wanted to, to be fair, okay, let, let me tell you a, a bit of my my background. Lah. I I was born and bred here in Sabah, right? And mm. I studied here until Form 5. And then after Form 5, I mean, I wanted to do law. And okay. ov- obviously, we know that there's no law faculty here in Sabah. Yes. So I had no choice but to go to KL. Okay. Which is why I saw a question: Why can't they have a law faculty here in Sabah? Yeah, until I think until yeah. currently there's no law faculty. Correct. There's no law faculty, yeah. right? So, so I had to go to KL. Everything has to go to KL. Even you want to do your degree, you want to do your CLP. Everything has to go to KL. Mm. Right. So all of us, so I had I I was one of those who go there right and I was mm. in KL for like five years and then after that I also went to the UK right okay um thought of doing my I, which I did my masters there after that and then I decided to stay there and work for okay. a while stay <laughs> there <laughs> and you know why? why because I thought at that time you know I said you know the 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 Facilities are good, you know. All the benefits are good. Of course, tax they tax you twenty percent lah from your from your gaji. It's okay. very high, yeah. Okay, uh, but 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 the facilities, NHS, you know, everything that you get there is is. I mean, it's good lah. You know, I mean, I'm just very grateful that um, I mean, it's that my my dad is there, so therefore I get the right of abode to to mm. stay there. I, No dual citizenship, ah. Huh? <laughs> Very clear. <laughs> I have a right of abode, but I am a Malaysian okay. uh, citizenship. Okay. And I thought to myself, right, like when I was there, and I was like, okay, yeah, you earning good money, mm. fine, yes. yes. Uh, I'm <laughs> How long you been staying there for? About two years. I I worked for about two years. Two years. Oh, two years. Right? Okay. Yeah, and in London. London. I mean, the cost of living in London is very high. Okay. Right. And it's mahal lah. But you can save. When you come back to Sabah, right, during my, you know, my, 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 uh, cuti and whatnot. Vacation lah. Uh, come vacation back. Vacation lah. Oh, banyak. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, yeah lah. Uh, kan? At that okay. time, you were like, what, 20, I was like 24, 25. Okay. So you felt that, you know, like, You you have that purchasing power <laughs> when you come back home, <laughs> um, and then you know, and and for some reason, I just felt that it. I don't know. I mean, this is how I I saw. I have that economic sense of mm. me that I wanted that uh, income lah. Okay, mm. of course you're young, yes. you know, and you want that feeling of being able. You want that the you ambitious know, autonomy. Mm. You want that that sort of like. Ambition to like be able to be independent and buy things of your own because all this while you know when you were studying it's like mommy or <laughs> papa or you had to work you know uh, to get okay. extra income okay. but this is like your own you know sweat you know <laughs> okay and then I came back and I thought that it was is yes, this is why I I sort of lari lari kerja lah you know from from the legal. Uh, mm. Background and everything, and then suddenly I, I mean, yeah lah, we went to politics after that, and I decided to come back to Sabah, which I had a bit of a tiff with my mum. I bilang apa kau mau balik ini? Tiada kerja di sini. <laughs> my mum said it. <laughs> you know, yes. she was like, 
apa kenapa kamu balik sini mana ada kerja ini mana? Yes, true, yeah. I mean true, that, true, that true, is the reality. True, true, true. I mean I had that uh, conversation. I had that little conversation. I mean big conversation. It went on for months. But I felt that you know if you you have to, what can I do to contribute mm. back to my society? Okay, fine. I I had that opportunity to go there, but I just felt that it was a calling for me to come back and and you know. Co- Give back to the society. I know, you know, being, yeah being in politics before this, you know, it's it's no no joke, man. It's yes, it's no joke. <laughs> yes, <laughs> you're bankrupt all the time. <laughs> okay, when 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 Joe, you mentioned about yeah. that, you have been like working there for two years. Okay, quite happy that you're back to Sama. Yeah. Okay. The sum, uh, Sometimes I thought about it. Why am I contrib- here? But yeah, <laughs> I'm very happy and I'm very maybe satisfied. Your, I'm your Jodo is here. Your Jodo is here. Yeah. yeah. Eventually, you married and settled down in here. Yeah. Okay. But one thing is that I want to highlight is that uh, a question is that how actually we can attract back those like talent sabahan yeah. back to sab- back to our state to contribute. Okay, that is the first questions that I think we need to think address about. Address lah, yeah. Okay, to address and think about. And number two is, okay, like, of course, like, Joe, when you said you have the mindset that you want to do something to contribute to the state, right? I think you are just not the only one. Mm. I think maybe others, maybe others, our same wish people, okay, like our friends, okay, who is overseas, may, they might have the same thought mm. as you too. Mm. But question is, when they come back, what opportunity does they have? That is the okay. that's the biggest question. That's the biggest question. Yes. Sometimes sometimes we say that okay, like for example, okay, maybe a programmer, okay, a programmer. Now programming is quite mm. a hot, uh, it's like a what so called the hot job, right? Or we employ uh, because now it's because of the apps and about the social media. So let's say for example, a coding persons that working in KL, okay, let's say he come back in Samba. Does the ecosystem in here? Or the opportunity in here allow him to earn the salary like what he enjoyed in KL. That's definitely the question okay. too. Yeah. Yeah. So this is one thing. This is the one thing that I think we need to highlight and address. Hmm. Okay. What actually we can do? Or maybe in another way that sometimes we might be, how to say, uh, heard from heard that the governments okay they want to start certain sectors, okay, a uh, relate or whatever like manufacturing sector. But at the same time. Does we have that talent too? Does yeah. we have the skill or not too? That's mean that talent come back at the same time, job opportunity, actually it's related. It's like a whole big ecosystem. You know, I look at it in a different manner. I find that first and foremost, this is my opinion. Huh? They, mm, mm. I think for me, how how we could, before we even talk about those ones who already left Sabah, Mm. Right, we are called this brain drain, mm, right? True. And you know those ones that let's let's just work on the things that we have here now. Yes, okay. True. Rather than let's you know dwelling upon those who are left, you know this 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 state, and we still mm. have a whole uh, society, this generation that we could work on. Mm. So how can we work on this? First and foremost, I think it all goes back to uh, the plan, the vision for this state. Mm. First and foremost, you have to have a very clear vision of what do you want to see Sabah in the next 10 or 20 to 30 years to come. Now it goes back to leadership. Mm. That's number one, right? And then number two, it trickles down to uh, what if, okay, say for example, Okay, this is something that I have really ventured into green economics. Mm, yes, right? true. Like you just back from Brazil, Brazil, right? Brazil, right? right. Correct. Okay. And 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 if you have this vision of having a green economy, like Sarawak, you know, they're really putting so much of effort in green economy now. Yes, right? by the way, the Brazil one is the what is the is the what is it called convention? Is what? Oh, uh, it's basically the Club de Madrid. It's under the Club de Madrid. Okay. It is the um. Network of young leaders okay. from around the world. Okay. So under this, we are put into three different working groups: uh, social dimension of climate change, which is what I mm. I, I was uh, I was put in, and then there are two others, which is more on the um, economic side and mm. also in terms of the um, uh, economics and and social development. 
basically. But I chose climate change or slash green economy because I think, you know, that this is the way forward or another alternative for Sabah, right? So coming back to what I said, right? Um, before I, I move mm. on into, you know, this, uh, what I feel, what I believe that the green economy is mm. the next sort of uh, diamond that we need to tap into in Sabah. Yes, right? true. Okay, so number one, the, the state needs to have a very clear vision of what they want to do in the next 20 to 30 years to come. Or let's say until 2050. So that's like what, 30 years, right? And you need to prepare this whole new generation towards that. Because what I see is that a lot of our, I mean, you are in the line of education and you're mm. a lecturer. Yes, true. Right. There's, there is this mindset of you go to the, you know, you go for your tertiary education. Mm. You go, you know, university and whatnot mm. just for the sake of getting the degree. But before that, uh, it, it's the degree, I mean, you know, is that degree able you, enables, enables you to get a job? The job opportunity. Job opportunity. So yes. I think what is very important is for the state to actually have a clear vision. Okay, look, we are focusing more on, let's say, green economy. Now we need to prepare this group of people, this you know generation for a green economy. Mm. So the focus of, you know, all these tertiary education uh, institutions, mm -hmm. for my opinion, should focus more on getting these young people to go for this courses. Yes, this is, this is my opinion, right? Rather than you just, oh, you know, oh, yeah, we're getting this much of, you know, uh, students or this much of, uh, you know, applicants for such course and such course and such course. And yet, Tiada job. Tiada job. Tiada and then kerja, what do you kerja, do yeah. after that? Menganggur. Okay, possible they will change to other industry. Change Correct. To, okay, most of the time they will change like, okay, since I have degree, okay, yeah. my, what I study, don't have the job, maybe I just go, go, as we are go to the bank. La. Correct. Okay, go to the bank, still go to back to self, uh, like service line. Okay, and seems like what everyone has to do before this. I mean, is. I have quite a number of friends where they went into, you know, mm. they, they took history, for example, mm. they took like geography, you know, and, and mm. of course we need <laughs> people who knows mm. history and people who, who wants to mm. teach geography. But then once they come out, they cannot find a job and what they became is this, either they Banker, had to do, you know, insurance agent, insurance agent, Banker. MLM, okay, property agent, property agents, which is totally out from what they have learned. Yes, true. Like, for example, I like just now when you mentioned about course like UMS, right, they have offered this for the street, I think Sekolah Perputanan, I think mm -hmm. they are something like related to the green, uh, or oh, so called the green tech, or probably like the study mm. of the naturals. Uh. Okay, one thing I quite agree with Joe is that uh, pasal the next 10 years or the 20 years, what actually Sabah want to do. Yeah. We need to have our self-identity. Correct. Sabah self-identity. Sabah, you want champion at what? At what? Yes. yes. Sabah, you want champion at what? Okay, like, uh, is it? Okay, for the past few years ago, I think pre before the covid we are like, seems like we are champion ourselves at the tourism. Correct. <laughs> For the tourism. Mm. But after, okay, however, after the, during the COVID pandemics, okay, tourism, of course, is closed down. Okay. And now, after the post, we seems like still depending that we, the, the, the tourism. The, tourism. Yeah. Okay, the tourism. Well, without the tourism, our market, like what we so called like half that fish. Yeah. Nyawa, nyawa ikan. Yeah. Okay, so this is one thing that when we too depends on the tourism, that's mean that we are too depends on the foreign tourists. Without them, it seems like we don't have other source of, how to say, income. revenue or income for the state. Correct. Okay. And, and, and besides that, you know, I mean, we are also an oil producing state, mm. right? So they are also really relying on, on oil and gas, mm. right? And, and palm oil and whatnot. Yes. Um, of course, you know, with the current issues, you know, the global issues that we're going right now, now mm. they're, what, COP28 now, right? In, mm. in, 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 in Dubai. Yes. And they're talking about, you know, uh, countries that are relying a lot on oil and gas. Yes. Right? <laughs> <laughs> Which is including Malaysia. Yes. Right. Um, but again, you know, uh, again, when you see oil and gas, oil, it's going to deplete 
after what 40 50 60 70 100 years to come Pum, yes Pum, yes okay True. but no don't don't go maybe, so far lah no, so just... maybe we not we never know what is the technologies in correct. front lah, but correct we but for the oil and gas okay uh how to say maybe not that so not that fast to deep it or we don't know because we are not the professional correct. or the scientist or geology correct. Correct. but one thing we can say that the oil and gas there seems like there is a some change lah probably now i think some in the time i think some people start to promote about the ev ev yeah uh, electric EV, uh, EV. electric vehicles EV. Uh. well because when you just not mentions about the oil and gas actually oil and gas is like a big conflict of interest with the green correct. technology correct. <laughs> and correct. another one before this i have mentioned i have listened about the what the carbon storage carbon, carbon okay. yes yes such thing uh. so so like if you look at the so let's let's look at the i think this is a very interesting question that i mean the uh, mm. uh, issue that we have to address when it comes to budget yes, right true. the budget of sabah and sarawak okay right 2024 so we've seen that in sabah right 2024 uh the budget surplus is 35 36 million okay mm. uh, supply expenditure was like 5.7 and then estimated revenue mm. also 5.7 mm. now sarawak is different sarawak is different sarawak okay. yeah it's, it's <laughs> totally three, different they have they 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 expected to generate a surplus of 386 mm. million yes you know and with 12.4 billion budget that was stable yes stable yes <laughs> it's almost like i think is about a double the double Correct. size the double size so How do you compare this? I mean, they have two unique stories, you know, between these two states. Because normally people will always talk about, oh, you know, what the disparity between Sabah and Sarawak and West Malaysia. But mm. now let's go even to a smaller scale, right? Here we are in in East Malaysia too. We have such a disparity. Let's say the budget itself pun kita nampak sudah, right? Mm. It's 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 totally different, right? Yes. And how do you compare? And what unique approaches do you think they adopt? Uh, to drive and grow, you know. I mean, to a dr- uh, to to sort of drive uh, the development and growth of of both states. Okay, now let us before we look into the budget. Budget always about the number. Okay, number sometimes pun I got how to say the number is big. Sometimes we unable picture. Big is how big the money mm. actually, because mm. sometimes money is not really flow into our pocket, mm. right? So this one thing, but one thing we can, but one thing we need to really to acknowledge or take the fact is that Sabah and Sarawak, okay, we are living in the so called a North Borneo island, okay. right? And then we have this Kalimantan, and then we have Brunei. Basically, this piece of land is the island, is the pulau, okay, it's a pulau, okay, and we have three country like just now I mentioned Indonesia, Brunei, and Malaysia. Okay, now so I think for the past two years, I think we are uh, have like read the news that eh, the Indonesians want to move their capital to Nusantara, yeah, to Nusantara, right? Mm. Okay, are we waiting for the development from there? Actually, it's a good topic that today you invite me come to discuss about. Mm. Okay, the bread and butters of the West Malaysia. Actually, Sabah and Sarawak, we are on the same island, mm. but not uh not Borneo Island, we by we are the third largest. In in the world, in the world, correct. Okay. We are not the continent, but we are the island. Island, uh, yeah. It's considered as island. Okay, now so like just now, Joe, you mentioned is that uh, Sarawak. Okay, they are uh, produce their budget is two times of our budget. Mm. Okay, one thing I can add is about the uh, GDP per capita. That's yeah. mean that their GDP per person. I think roughly yeah, uh, their GDP per capita. That's mean that per annum per year is about eighty thousand. Okay, while for Sabah is about 36. Okay, I think it's almost about like uh, 2.5 times. Okay, it's different. So this indicate that, uh, okay, Sarawak seems like they have tried to enter into a high income state. Okay, that's the one thing. Now, from this time, the budget, what we can see that is Sarawak has actually allocated more budget into development more than in the operation, operation. Oh, okay. okay more into the operation while in sabah is we allocate more of the fund into way into the operation more than the development mm. okay so like from the figures that i have is that the operation in sabah i think is about 4.7 b okay while the development is only 1.3 for sarawak is that they have spent 7.8 for the development mm. and 4.6 for the operation, operation. 
As mean that Sarawak seems like they maybe they are quite control their costs. Okay, control their costs and they spend more into development. When you spend more money into development, that means there is a growth for the state. State, yes, yes. Uh, for the state. But from what I can see this time from the speech from the uh, Premier, the mm. Sarawak, okay, seems like they are trying to diversify their economic. That's true. Okay, economic. And they are trying into looking into the digitalization. Mm. Okay, that's one thing. And they try to enter the stage, the international stage. Yes. Okay, and especially I noticed that they have started this Sarawak uh, Sovereign Fund. Mm. Okay, Sarawak, I, not most of the time, Sovereign Fund, okay, it means that a state, they try to possible they tap into their reserve, they use their reserve, they are invest into the foreign asset or the foreign country which can make a return. Okay, then they use the return, okay, take back, uh, bring back to the state. Okay, try to have an additional revenue. Mm. Okay, while well, for Sabah, I noticed that for Sabah, this time after they, after the presented, okay, by the Dun, okay, assembly, mm. I noticed that Sabah, we seems like we still is quite focused this time is about the self-sufficient food. Okay, food, okay, the agriculture, mm. okay, and then we are, seems like, try to start tapping into the manufacturing. Mm. Okay, and then the third one is still the same, lah, tourism. Tourism, lah. yeah. Okay, so we can see that there is a different approach. Uh, mm. The different approach, but somehow, I think, although that, uh, they have a look at the budget, but one thing that like, just now back to the previous topic about the green technology, mm. the green technologies about the green economy seems like not that yet significant yet. In, in Sabah. In Sabah, yeah. yeah. Mm, if, if I were to add on, on this uh, green economy, I, I, I believe when, mm. I, when I look at it, you know, and as I mentioned that Sarawak has put a lot of effort mm. in this, mm. right? And they want to be, you know, they have set the precedent mm. uh, of being the first state that actually legis uh, uh, pass a legislation mm. uh, that with regards to uh, anti, uh, for, sorry, for climate change, mm. right? To which federal government hasn't do that yet. <laughs> and according to, you know, uh, Minister Venari CC, they are in mm. the process of doing it for the next, what, two to three years, right? Um, so uh, Sarawak is really, you know, playing the game, lah, I would playing say. Playing the game. Playing the game, right? But, but in, a, in a positive way. So if you look at the funding allocation, mm. right, for, for Sabah, in terms of green economy, mm. they have spent uh, 144 million for sustainable initiatives. Mm. And a hundred and twenty-seven uh, million for climate change and adaptation actions. Right? It it sounds like big number. Okay. But however, I feel that it would be helpful, right? If we could also see the details on how this funding will be used and specific initiatives, especially here in Sabah, because I, it's not so clear. Right? Yes. Right. Num and that's number one. And coming back to what we spoke about just now. You know, as Sabah, I fully agree with you. What is it Sabah can offer? Or in, in terms of what identity, right? The identity of, 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 of Sabah. Um, and how do, we, how do we want to expand from tourism, for example? Yes, we are getting a, a certain amount, billion of money mm. from tourism. But then this is the new economy. Now, let, let me, perhaps I could also talk about, you know, emphasizing on green economy in Sabah. Why? I'm, I'm, I'm very into this. I I'm, I'm actually want to advocate more on this. <laughs> you know, we have natural resources. Mm. You know, we, cultural variety. And of course, eco-tourism potential. So we are well positioned in green economy, mm. right? And the global policy right now focuses more on green economy for the past decades, right? And, but... People I would be asking, hey, Joe, what, what, what actually is green economy? Yes, yeah, Sam, I will ask. <laughs> <laughs> so the question is, apa itu economy uh -huh. hijau? Like, I think probably, just to add in, maybe people is still unable to see how green and the economy can generate profit. Okay, okay. Let maybe me, Joe, you can answer right, this one. Okay, so, okay. First and foremost, green economy is low carbon. Okay. Right. Uh, clean manufacturing, okay. right? And also basically um, inclusive consumption. 
inclusive consumption, okay? Okay, it's, it sounds very technical, but let's just say it's low carbon. Low carbon. Okay. Okay. Bersih. Bersih. <laughs> <laughs> Paling bersih. Okay. Right. right. So, um, so the prospect in uh, the green economy in Sabah is there because of the natural resources that we have and hmm. whatnot. So, following the national energy trans uh, tran- transformation uh, roadmap that hmm. was being uh, that was launched okay. uh, by the federal government, then Sabah came out with this Sabah Energy Roadmap and Master Plan of 2040. Okay. A few few months mm-hmm. back, right? And the goal is to have reliable and sustainable power supply. So, that, so solar power. Solar power and means all is it is under the green. It is under the green, green energy. Yeah. Green how about how about hydro how hydro plant? Yes, it is. Also. Is it also? Yes. Okay. Right. Uh. Um. And a green economy also it it's it's quite it's it it goes uh, across the board. You know, you're talking about hmm. uh, nature based solutions, for example. You know, carbon credits and stuff like. Yes. That. True. Yes. Okay. Uh, okay. It's also that's considered green economy. In fact, uh, the latest. Uh, survey have shown that you can actually generate in terms of southeast asia huh? hmm. you can actually generate 3.8 billion 3.8 billion a gdp okay income when it okay. comes to a green economy just in southeast asia southeast asia right an hmm. extra of 3.81 billion if I, yeah 3.81 hmm. billion so can you see how much of money can it actually generate into you know a a a a region mm-hmm. or a state right So okay, coming back to the Sabah Energy Roadmap, right? What they are, what what they're targeting is that they want to target. Of course, we know that we always mati hidup lampu mah. <laughs> Our bread and butter joke. <laughs> It is bread and butter. How can you actually run a company or run a business? Yes, it impact the bread and butter. It will impact 100% on uh, bread and butter when you always don't have water. When you always don't have uh, what do you call this electricity, yes, right? true, right? It's impact on our brand, correct? Butter. And now, th- you know, when, when I mean, this year has been one of the hottest years in 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 history, yes, right? Okay. And remember, I think it's few months back where it was so hot mm-hmm. that everyone started to switch on, on their the air conditioner. Co- yes, conditioner, right? And they had to do a power shed. And one thing is, I noticed that when or when there is a like a huge or a festival season month, yeah. okay, definitely the power also banyak uh, uh, kena putus. Kena putus, uh, kena putus. Yeah. Kena putus. Because why? Because we the, don't have enough energy in yes. in in Sabah. So yeah, I mean, in this in this in their roadmap. Uh, hmm. Sabah is targeting uh, below 100 minutes of system average interruption duration index. So they call it SID. SID. Yeah. Okay. It's 100 minutes. Okay. Now, something. now okay. it's 300 minutes. So tiap, we have 300 minutes lalu tutup lampu. <laughs> 300 minutes lalu tutup lampu. Kuala Lumpur is just 50 minutes. 50. If you work di Kuala Lumpur, Kuala Lumpur, Kuala Lumpur, Electric, I think tenaga we kena. Everybody kena. We kena slam. Here it's like oh, oh okay lah, yeah. <laughs> oh, oh perkara <laughs> biasa, you know. It's it a is, normal thing. It's a normal thing, but it's <laughs> actually, I mean, we laugh about it, but yes. it's actually sad. Yeah, it's a sad. Right. Mm. So they want to push it below 100. So how are they going to go about this? Yes. Okay, that's number one. Number one. They want to go on a hundred percent of rural electrification by 2030. What does mean rural? A lot of our rural okay. electrification. Maksud dia our oh, interior. In they mean tiada to, electric ma? They want to extend the electricity Correct. onto the rural and, area. And because now what we have the issue is right. A lot of our uh, rural areas. Why do you think is poverty? Because there is a, a, a they they actually did a study that there is an interrelation. There is interconnected between hmm. poverty and no electric. No electric. Right. Yes. Without okay. electric, you're unable to productivity. Correct. Your productivity will be low. Kosong. Yes. You kosong. Kosong. No lah. Low lah. Low lah. Not kosong, but low. Right. No. Okay. But this is the thing. Yes. So true. and a lot of our kampu people they rely on generator. And you go rely on generator. How you kasi hidup generator? Bukan Bo- pasal diesel mah? Yes, diesel. Ah, ah, exactly. So they're going to go on 100% rural electrification and carbon neutrality by 2050. So this is the state government mm, punya. Yes. Uh, apa ni sort of master plan lah. Think 20, and, do you think 2050 is too too late? Is it too long a period? No, actually, it's What it's okay. Think? It's 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 okay. It's right? okay. It's, acceptable. It, it's acceptable. Okay. I think I think it's a quite ambitious. To be fair, in the short time, 
It's yeah. considered in a short period. With, 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 with our current situation right now, I think 2050 is quite ambitious for Sabah. For Sabah. Mm. Okay. Okay, that's okay, that's for sure. my opinion, right? Okay. And the state government is also going to take over uh, the regulation authority, ECOS, right? Okay. By the 3rd of January in 2024, right? So my question right now is, how do you want to prepare all of this? Well, you have to go back to green. Nah? Go back to the green. You need to depend on the green to generate the surplus, the additional, Correct. like all the plant to extend all the electricity under the rural and then to hit the 2050 target. To, yes. All right. Mm. Now, so what I would like to, you know, this is my opinion, you know, it's my, my personal mm. opinion of how should we go about this for mm. Sabah? Mm. Yeah, we're talking about green economy because I think that in terms of bread and butter issue, I feel that this is an area that we can actually generate more uh how do you call this um job opportunities tapping into the need tapping into a new a new economic economic besides the the, the you know the traditional the convention ones that we mm. the conventional ones that we have right now which is ecotourism mm. agriculture uh what, what is it um uh, oil and gas and whatnot okay right so I think there needs to be an increase of funding when it comes to renewable energy mm-hmm. right since we are trying to hit that you know, 100% rural electrification, uh, you know, carbon neutrality and, and, and renewable energy in mm. because they are new companies. They're trying to get more investors more to come in, investors right? Investors to come in, yes. How investors to come in when you always mati lampu juga? Yes, that's the one thing. Can? So yes. what, what is your next alternative is that one, right? Mm. So secondly, I think there needs to be focus also on community-based uh, green economy. Based green economy. Yeah, to empower the local communities. So what do you talk about uh, community-based green economy? It's talking about sustainable farming. Sustainable farming, yes, possible. Right. Like just now, like what they uh, keep promote, ESG lah. ESG, correct. Yes, environmental, sustainable, sustainable and growth. Uh, yes, correct. Environment, sustainable growth, mm. right? So we're talking about sustainable farming, mm. okay? You have to give, you have to, you know, give resilience. I mean, to, to, to sh- sh- sort of like, uh, make sure that the community is resilient and they are also adapting to this new uh, sort of era, this era. green era that we are we are going right now. Right? Especially the youngster. Correct. The youngster yes. try to help you need to... Okay, besides the youngster, I think maybe we... Because to achieve like what you mentioned just hmm. now in 2050, besides the funding, I think another very important is the talent. Talent. Does we tell, does we have the talent and the skill to operate all this? Which is why I said we have to go back to what do you want the state to become in the next <laughs> thirty years to come? So the state, the leadership, I mean, it all goes back to effective leadership. True. Right. Is it you want to make a policy? The policy has to be at the end of the day what benefits the society, mm. or what you want to achieve. What do you want to teach? And and mm. again, it goes back to society. I think this is what is sometimes lacking in 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 the leadership that we have. Also, mm. I mean, the courage to um, you know sort of implement the policies, but there needs to be empathy too. You need to be firm. Firm, yeah, but Strong empathy. And- you <laughs> have to you have to understand, right? Uh-huh. What is the need? Yes. But at the same time, you also have to have the courage to actually look here. This is what we're going to do for Sabah. This is what we want to do it for the next 20, 30 years to come. Let's do it. Whatever it is, let's do it. Whatever is it, just do it. Yeah. This is what Sarawak, I, this is what I see about Sarawak. Yes, because one thing is when you mentioned about the Sarawak, one thing yeah, I noticed that is mm. that you, you noticed recently, okay, for the past few years, Sarawak is keep emphasized day one, they have own their own education system, right? Correct. Okay, because I think to represent a, a state's autonomy, right? The two right things, the very important is the education and the health. Mm. These two. Okay, these two portfolio. Now, I noticed that Sarawak has been keep talking about the education. Okay, and recently I noticed that the Sarawak, they start to set their UPS, something like UPSR. Yeah. Because UPSR Assessment. is already mm. abolished in the, it's no more UPSR among the primary school, right? Now Sarawak, they seems like want to do their own UPSR. Yeah. Okay. Now, however, when you want to have your own autonomy, mm. actually, it comes with a cost. It comes with a cost because like, for example, maybe let's say, say, let's say the federal say, okay, I give back you the, this uh, education portfolio, mm. 
But somehow the teachers and the lecturers and all the fee you need to pay the cost and then the budget you need to pay by your Sarawak. Yeah. Okay. But for Sabah, does we ready or not? Because like from just now, the budget we have seen that is two time difference. Sarawak, they seems like they already want to diversify economy. They start to want to look into the digitalization and they seems like have prepared themselves with the budget, with the fi- with the good financial background mm. to fight for their autonomy. Yeah, that's true. Take over the autonomy. Mm. So question is for Sabah, like just now, Joe, back to you. One thing about that, Sabah next 20, 30 years, what actually we want to do? Okay. You have like to say, have an identity. Yes, you I have think, the identity. I think that is the highlight of our conversation la, today, Tim. Because yes. what identity... That Sabah want w- to bring. Correct. Want to bring This it. is lacking in Sabah, yes, I feel. We, we seems like... All the while when people say, hey, tourism, tourism, then it's like... It's like all the while is there. But it's... Tourism, this one, I think that... No matter what industry is it, it will be have the peak time. Definitely, it will be have a slow time. Yeah. Okay. So we need to explore, like we so call a uh, problem like just now to say the green technology. Mm. Oh, now, but one thing is that of course Sabah we seems like a bit lag behind, but it also tells us that we have opportunity also, right? Because our city we still in the develop. Actually, if the leadership, if they really want to bring in the technologies, actually, uh, the green technologies mm. or the green economy, actually the urban ci- the urban planning, okay, the city urban planning and the green technology and the green economy, it can be probably hybrid or combined mm. to have a, maybe we can look for a, don't know, maybe we can create a new economic or a, like we so-called the self-identity for yeah. Sabah. Yeah. Okay, we still have the space. Okay, we still have the space. Mm. Okay, although we our is a bit slow. Okay, mm. compared to like KL or compared to like uh, Sarawak, but we still have the chance. We have the yeah, we have the opportunity again. It, mm. It's it just goes back to the vision. You know, you have to have leadership vision, and then you know you have to really focus. I think again another mm. thing that I would like to also bring for us to discussion. Mm. Uh, we are looking at the reason. You think why Sarawak is a bit more so 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 called focused, <laughs> or as opposed to Sabah? I mean, you they've seen you know we've seen the disparity between Sabah mm. and Sarawak mm. uh, in terms of development and economic opportunities, mm. right? From what we have mentioned, what we have discussed earlier, mm. what do you think, right? That is contributing towards this disparity. This disparity okay. of of you know economic growth. I mean. I brother just <laughs> <laughs> paling senang lah itu pen bonio they are almost <laughs> finishing and we are still going on every year talking about finishing pen bonio okay now like that, that's a very good uh, example the depan mata kita ba depan mata I think like <laughs> I think previously Joe you have shared one thing I think about one news kan pasal the bureaucracy okay I think bureaucracy when, uh, when we okay bureaucracy okay normally it's like from the top to the bottom or from the bottoms to the tops. Okay, sometimes yeah. it depends on how you uh, communication uh, mm. in the department or how. But one thing is that I think one thing we need to look, of course, is the execution. Okay. Okay, the execution part. How, when you have a, such a like a, no matter what big plan or budget, whatever is it, the most important is your execution. Implementation. Mm. Your execution and implementation. Like I like I heard before you said that even you have a B grade plan, okay, but you have a good execution, mm. eventually the effect will be very good. But somehow I noticed that we have no most of the time we have a very good plan, but we have a not a good execution. <laughs> probably, probably, okay, that's my opinion. Yeah. Okay, that one thing. But let us look back to the economic part. Okay, when we're saying that the Sarawak, okay, why the disparity economic is there? Okay, first thing probably you can see is that uh, now Sabah and Sarawak, the main contribute, uh, the economic main contribute sector, first thing is, of course, is the financial and the services. Yeah. Okay, all the times. Uh, okay, but for the Sarawak, okay, I noticed from the source of uh, the news that I have is that Sarawak, the second one is probably is the manufacturing mm. the second uh, the second after the s- services 
The second contribution is the manufacturing. While in Sabah, actually, is the mining and the querying. Mm. Okay, agree. Now, why these two is has a, such an impact is because of manufacturing. It means that you add value. Okay, to the natural resources that you have. Yeah. Okay, like for example, okay, assume Jo you is a country. You uh, maybe you represent like example lah, Singapore lah. Mm. Okay, I'm a uh, Malaysia. So. Not say Malaysia, maybe Sabah lah. Okay, take it Sabah. Okay, so like, I have this. Uh, let's say for example, we are famous with kayu balak, right? I sell to you in the maybe one million. Okay. One million. Then you process the kayu balak into the chair, right? Then you sell back to me two million. Okay, so who is the losing side? Of course, Sabah I'm the losing lah. side. Mm. Yes. So how about let's say for example, if Sabah you have your own manufacturing, okay. The kayu balak, you after you get it, you produce it into the chair, into the table, a value added. Then you export yourself. Out. This is another thing that I think we should also focus on in Sabah. Mm. Downstreaming. Yes, downstreaming. Because a lot of our start, uh, a lot of our natural resources, yeah like kayu balak, or in mm. fact, you know, uh, uh, the palm oil, pasir, yes. silica, you silica. know. Silica. I think they have bring in the what's so called the kibing, right? Yes, Recently, kibing. Okay, I think keeping is a, I think is a quite a good effort by the government. But yeah. one thing I quite concerned is that if keeping come in, yes, it's a big corporate, it's a big corporation, it create mm. the job. But the most important is how keeping has the spillover effect to the SME, small, medium, medium enterprise. and the price. Yeah. Yes, because keeping you come in. Okay, what else additional spillover effect to the SME? Because that's mean that keeping come in. Okay, you start. Do, do all the production, all these things, right? But SME surrounding does it benefit? Mm. Okay, maybe like for example, keeping is outsource their service, uh, the cleaning service, maintenance service to our local SME. Mm. Okay, that will be a uh, we so called the add a good economic add on to the Sabah. Right. Uh, I I like when you talk about SMEs, right? Uh, mm. I mean, I'm not a, a an economist nor a, mm. a financial expert, but I've uh, I've we've we've known of we've seen that SMEs actually is a, one of the driving factors for economic growth in a state. Yes. Right. I think it's not just in the state. I think whenever any in country, fact in the country, too, in any country, country right? SME actually we call is the tunjang lah. It's the belakang tunjang. Okay. It's the why because SME. Normally, if the economy is grow is good, they are grow the fastest. Mm. Okay, when they grow the fastest, mm-hmm. these are the one to, uh, how to say, they are the one hire most of the people. Okay, they are enjoy a good profit, and then they are drive the they are the main one to drive the economy. Right. So, oh. is it possible then we could, uh, you know, uh, empower these SMEs and then more focus on the SMEs. In, yes. In 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 Sabah. Yes. Then, I mean. I, I think yes. I think yes. The state should probably when okay. Like I think from what I experience around mm. surrounding my friends, okay, mm. who involved in the SME. Sometimes when the federal or the state when they say they come up like certain like okay a policy la or grant la or business grant or business uh, loan or financing with a special rate mm. okay to the SME but they seems like don't have the channel or they don't know where or how to apply it mm. although i think the state they have the state or the federal they have tried their best okay for okay to come up all these scheme scheme la mm. okay scheme for the SME but portion is i think maybe the state maybe they can try how to send the message dissemination of information yes All to right. the SME mm. I think this will be help a lot to the SME who want to maybe the start up or they want to grow to expand mm. the business probably I, I think this is a very another huge topic yes probably next time we maybe can next have. time yeah <laughs> because I think this is a uh, it's a quite an interesting topic that you know we have to look into mm. you see but um but I if I were to add I think It also goes back to one thing. Mm. Um, let's talking, uh, you know. Let's talk about uh, the social, um, socio economy, and you talk about political stability also in Sabah. Or well, why? Why there's disparity? I feel this is what I feel, mm. right? Now in Sabah and Sarawak, Sarawak seems to be more stable in their uh, 
political, you know, yes. uh, games and arena, <laughs> as opposed to Sabah, it's uh, it's very vibrant. Yes, it's consistent vibrant lah. <laughs> <You're> <laughs> very vibrant. So I told okay. my and any of my friends, you know, from Semenanjung, I said, if you want to become mm-hmm. a politician and really, really become a politician and learn about political games, yes. come to Sabah. <laughs> <laughs> you, <laughs> you can you can have a government that doesn't even go on full term. Okay, only true. two years. Pun boleh jadi juga pilihan raya. But anyways, that's that's, that's besides that's the not, point, oh, lah. You know, okay. that's just a joke. But I feel that Sabah has sort of endured quite a bit. Let's talk about the mm. geopolitical issues, mm. right? From you know, this is the only state that had um, rotation of two years of CM. CM, yes. I think during the Tan Sri Chongkakan, is it? No, uh, start off with yeah, Chongkake, Chongkake and then Benadongpo, okay, uh, Saleh Sir grew up, okay. and then also Sukam, okay, yeah, I I I was very young at that time. <laughs> same, 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 same as me. <laughs> I think okay. I'm still in kindergarten. Okay, um, mm. and then that was that. All right, so we went through that phase where every policy has been, you know, you. <sighs> Two years? How can you actually implement yes. a policy for two years? And probably one CM has a different, you know, vision, and to mm. another CM, to another CM. So this is these these are the things that I feel that what had made Sabah a bit ke belakang sedikit lah, lagging as opposed to Sarawak because Sarawak has been quite stable lah. True. Although there's only been one person for being the CM for quite some time, mm. you don't know, but still they were stable. That's number one. Number two, Sabah has always been facing on uh, international geopolitical um, issues. Geopolitical right? For example, um, you know, Sulu wants to claim Sabah. <laughs> <laughs> That's one of them. You know, we are so we, we, distracted I, by these. We are spending the time and the money in some other things. Correct. Okay. Which actually the issue is, you know, how do you want to build Sabahans? You know, yes. that has to be the focus. And you know, we've we've been dealing with that. You know, Sulu's claim on Sabah, and then of course that you know this this issue of of uh, mm. what do you call this An influx of um, you know IC lah before IC, this. Yes. You know. So there's so much of of distraction to the point where, you know, the real issue is that how do you want to, you know, have a how do you want to uplift the community, the Sabah community, how, the betterment for the Sabah uh, community, as opposed to Sarawak, or oh, they're so focused. Yes, they're focused. Probably, I I quite agree with you that about the political stability. It's one of the main. Perhaps it's the one of the factors they play the role. Oh, even even that, you know, it's so much of uh, political keluar masuk keluar masuk from the other side. <laughs> oh, and that's a, that's a big issue topic that there's we can a big actually, issue. Maybe we can we talk, can talk about can, it next time. But next time. I feel that there's so much of uh, interference too from from you know political maybe, from uh, West okay. Malaysia and stuff as opposed to you know GPS they've been very very stable yes there is no interference from uh, you know politicals from West Malaysia and whatnot as opposed to here you know mm. there's so much of interference but you know at the end of the day asepa yang susah kita rakyat sendiri yang susah bawa orang bilang like maybe I can add on is that is about the Economic policy and how is the political stability? Yeah, because sometimes when we want to implement a policy, right? Okay, you need to have at least maybe a uh, five time to see the result of a policy. Take the example, like for example, Sabah, we have our elections in two zero two zero, right? The, the Sabah, second the, one. The, the uh, sorry, the after twenty eighteen. Ah. 2018 and then 2020 20. and then two years time you can see that 2018 okay uh when the CM I think Shafi right that time yeah. okay you have set up a policy okay and then 202020 and then you have the uh, current uh, CM and RGG, you yeah. RGG, and then of course you have the change of policy again yes okay when until the 20 and uh, and then I think if I'm saying the last year when the elections right the national elections national, yeah. and then I think our state cabinet uh, the state as the cabinet is Rombakan mm. re- reshuffled again. So when you can see that difference of ministers, okay, of different of a uh, CM, of course, difference of policy. Correct. Okay, when you keep shuffle, okay, and the previous policy how 
you end it, the project that you have awards, yeah. okay, how you stop it, okay, or how you continue. And most of it, when you reshuffle, you stop the previous project and do a, award a new project, it all wastes the time. Yeah, correct. Okay, that is the one thing maybe we can, the like what Joe say probably is one of it. The, the the instability that's causing all this ah, uh, economic in- uh, lagging and, and and the disparity between Sabah and Sarawak. Mm, probably yeah. that's okay. the one thing. So, you know, let's conclude our, mm. you know, sort of uh, discussion today. Mm. You know, our cerita-cerita. Yeah, cerita-cerita. <laughs> yeah, for yeah. The... But serious cerita lah. Okay. <laughs> so, what do you think? How what What is your hope and what is your solution, you think, as, as a person who is in finance and economics for Sabah's uh, future? Okay, now, for Sabah, like in the early, what I mentioned is that Sabah, we need to accept the fact that we are is the island. We are a pulau. So, whenever any talent or expert they want come into Sabah, the only way they can come in transportation is by flight or is by uh, by ship. Mm. Okay. So, of so course, we most- are a maritime mm. country. Uh, I mean, maritime state. state. Yeah, maritime state. Yes. So that's mean that the only way for people come in is the flight, which is quite costly. Yeah. Okay. It's a costly. That's the one thing. So transportation cost, of course, uh, for the passengers or for the cargo. Okay. I think this one, maybe government need to work work on. Uh. Mm. By the way, Tony Fernandez, I think, is in the town, right? Yeah. <laughs> is in the town. Not sure whether CM, I think CM has, uh, how's it, uh, has talked to him, try to ask a, uh, a Asia provide more international flight, okay, to bring in the tourism or maybe bring in more business opportunity. Yeah, yeah. Okay, mm. that is the one thing. Now, since Sabah is the island, okay, now, so I think the most important is that we need try to bring something that in Mm. Okay. At the same time, we need to export some export valuable good and services outside mm. to earn the revenue. That is the one thing. Now, normally, since we are like just I mentioned, we're maritime. Okay, actually, we are very depending on our dos- domestic consumption, Correct. local consumption. Correct. But question is that like just now you mentioned that like, our pen bonio pun belum siap. <laughs> okay, from KK sampai Sandaka or Tawau, I think we don't know kena berapa jam. The only way to travel inside the domestic pun, most of the time we're using the flight, flight juga. Mm. Okay, means come in, people come inside, you need use the flight. Mm. Okay, we travel inside, we also need the flight. Mm. Okay, so I can see that what I hope is that the state guard or the coming or the future's government or what is it? Mm. I hope that they really need to look into uh like Joe say the vision, okay, a self identity beside the self identity. For the economic, I hope is that try to how to say um connect all the city or the township inside the Sabah. Mm. Okay, that is the one thing. Before talking about that, okay, Sabah connect to Kalimantan yeah. ka, to Sarawak, right? I think the most important now is that how Sabah, the connection dot can be linked. Okay, either it's like, but the even electricity, we tak sampai lagi semua. Okay, it's not connected. Okay, jalan raya, water, the whole thing. Okay, how we boost our domestic consumption. Before at, even yes. talking at about At the yeah. same time, we try to attract the people come inside here. Okay, when our domestic consumption, domestic like all the infrastructure is good, is well enough, it will attract people come in. Mm. Okay, like for example, Sandakan is another town, right? Mm. Okay, how we can encourage the, how to say, the business opportunity between KK and Sandakan. Mm. Okay, and how about Tawa? Okay, how the state... Might be think okay. Beside, probably try to reduce the transportation cost, okay, or try to how to encourage, like for example, east cost and the west cost in the Sabah mm. should have the integration. Maybe this one in the future also can provide a political stability too. When east cost and the where east cost and the west cost people know each other better. Reach so, so uh. this. Yeah, I, I I agree with you because there is there seems to be if you're looking at it in a micro level, mm. 
I think there's also that uh, how do you want to bridge the gap between East Sabah and the West Coast of Sabah? Yes, actually. Because it's far. Yes, it's far. And there is a disparity. Two, right? There is a disparity. Yeah. Besides, Sabah has a disparity with the peninsula, Semenanjung, disparity with the Sarawak. Actually, internal, Pun there ada. is a disparity. Yeah. Yeah, uh, yeah. The disparity. I think this is something too that you know we mm. the our listeners have to also uh, try and look into this because it's not only the disparity between uh, Sabah, Sarawak, mm. and West Malaysia or Sarawak and Sabah, but also in Sabah too there is that disparity. Let alone, yeah. in fact, in terms of uh, uh, apa ini, uh, energy wise, you know, in West in mm. West uh, Coast here. Okay, we are sort mm. of better electrified as opposed mm. to the what do you call this the, the the East Coast. Yes, they they are lacking of uh, power supply there. Actually, Samba we have five division. Mm. If I if we have five divisions, yeah. right? Okay, so in the future, uh, because Sabah is the second largest state. Okay, after the Sarawak. Sarawak, yeah. Okay, so how is it? Should the future's government? Okay, should we have a better? Uh, power decentralized is it? I don't know, but maybe it's a topic that we can discuss, or maybe we can talk. Okay, in the future, is that mm. should we decentralize a bit the power? Like for sure. example, each five division, you should have your own five pengara. Mm. Okay, while well, CM, okay, while well, this we have one CM and five pengara to maybe we have a better build distribution, mm -hmm. energy distributions, mm. or income distributions among the five division. Mm. Okay, five divisions. Okay, in. There is, I think only if when the five divisions among the Samba, the disparity gap is being close, yeah. close, probably then we can see more connections. connections. That's what is my hope. How about yeah. you? I think for me, I, I agree with all of this, you know, but again, that is more on the operation side. Mm, yes. I am always going back to the point where leadership is very essential in driving these efforts. Mm. You can have all these bombastic, you know, policies, mm. uh, you know, very so-called, when you look at it in paper, it's very, very remarkable uh, policies. <laughs> yes. But I think to make progress, uh, it is important for these to be put into action. True. Execution, right? implementation. Inaction is really not an option. Mm. We cannot afford to have inaction in Sabah. Yes. Because, I mean, we have all the natural resources. We have all these, you know, uh, prospects of, of, of new economies, you know, booming. Mm. But at the end of the day, if we don't see, if you don't see what, it does not benefit us in Sabah, then sayang lah orang bilang. Kan? Yes. Sayang, right? wasted. It's so, so we must be, you know, I, I think leaders must have a very clear vision and very clear strategy. But at the end of the day, <laughs> yes, it's true. execution. Mm. For me, I think it goes back to that. And once you have the right leadership, effective leadership, mm. this is what I, I would focus on. Not right, but effective mm. leadership. Then we will see some changes in, in Sabah. Yes, hopefully... We will wait for we hopefully they will become like I think there's still yeah. light at the end of the tunnel. <laughs> <laughs> All right. There's a light of the tunnel. All right. Thank okay. you very much for joining us today here on okay. Smart Talks. And we hope that this episode uh, has shed lights on the economic landscapes, um, the budgetary approaches, and as well as the disparities between Sabah and Sarawak. And stay tuned for more insightful uh, conversations on Smart Talks. Until next time. Bye. Bye.